In the next few minutes, we will observe the installation of the EnviroGuard BT-30 sash kit. Keep in mind that the existing sash as well as the new sash may be heavy. Therefore, you should only do this when a second person is available to assist you when needed. As you can see, we have a wood window unit with single glazed wood sash. We are going to be replacing the single glazed sash with an energy efficient BT-30 sash kit. The first step is to remove the existing sash. The sash slide up and down in a track and typically this track is held in by this piece of stop which runs the full length of the frame. Now let's get started. Unlock the existing sash and raise the lower sash. This existing unit has a compression jam liner. To remove the sash, press against the jam liner on one side and pull the corner of the sash towards you slightly. While holding the sash, compress the jam liner on the other side and pull that corner of the sash towards you. Oh well. At this point, the sash should tilt out. Raise one corner of the sash until the pin on the side of the sash disengages, then remove the remaining side. Lower the upper sash and tilt it forward towards you using the same method as the lower sash removal. Now that the sash are removed, we need to remove the parting stop at the top of the window and the tilt stop which runs down each side of the window. Prior to the next steps, you may want to cut a line at the point where the stop meets the frame or casing to prevent chip out of the adjoining paint. Doing this could make removal of some of these parts easier. Remove the parting stop that runs across the top of the window frame. Pliers can make this job a little easier. Now, using a putty knife or thin crowbar, remove the existing interior sash stops from the side jams. If any nails remain in the side of the window frame after removing the stop, you must remove them now. At this point, the jam liners can be removed, and that's it for the sash removal. Now, let's inspect the existing frame. This is a great time to close up any cracks that you see. If your frame is deteriorated, it should be repaired now. Also, I would recommend that you caulk the corner joint where the side of the frame meets the sill of the window frame and the exterior blind stop. The next step will be to install the jam liners. While holding the white foam pad, match the profile up with the top of the jam liner. Now hold the foam pad on the top of the jam liner and place the top of the jam liner against the top corner of the frame. While holding the jam liner against the top corner of the frame, slide the bottom of the jam liner over against the frame. If you have trouble sliding this over, you may need to push upward on the jam liner slightly in order to compress the foam pad. Once the jam liner is pushed up against the side frame and back of the exterior stop, install the long screw in the pre-drilled center hole of the jam liner.
Next, install the short screw into the pre-drilled bottom hole. Repeat the process for both jam liners. Once the jam liners are installed, we will install the sash. First, we want to adjust the shoes in which the sash ride for the top sash. It is very important that these shoes are placed so as to line up with each other on both the left and the right sides of the window. Failure to align these will result in the windows not operating properly. Insert a large straight bladed screwdriver in the metal portion of the shoe. Pull downward on the screwdriver about 6 inches. While pulling down on the shoe, the tension will increase, therefore it is critical that you maintain adequate pressure between the screwdriver and the shoe. While holding down on the screwdriver, rotate the metal portion of the shoe 90 degrees. This will lock the shoe into place. It is important that when this step is done that there is an open slot at the top of the metal shoe. If you do not have an open slot at the top of the shoe, continue to rotate 90 degrees until the open slot is facing up. Now we are ready to install the top sash. The top sash has a small pivot pin located on the side of the sash that locks or engages into the shoe once the sashes are installed. The bottom sash has a lock on it. You may require assistance at this point while installing the sash. Here's a little tip. Each sash has a finger lift groove. When installing the sash, make sure this groove is facing down towards the floor when you start the installation process. Hold the top sash parallel to the floor, finger lift groove down. Now, slightly lift one side of the sash Slip the metal pivot pin on one side of the sash onto the groove of the jam liner, not the shoe, then the other side. Now lower the sash down evenly until the pivot pin slip into the metal portion of the shoe slot. Once engaged, you may tilt the sash up into the frame. You will need to retract the tilt latch at the top of the sash so that the sash fully tilts up into the jam liner. Once the sash is tilted straight up, you may release the tilt latches. If done properly, the tilt latch will fully engage into the groove of the jam liner. Now you may want to push the top sash all the way up to the top of the frame. Now let's install the lower sash. You may require assistance at this point while installing the lower sash. Hold the top sash, hold the bottom sash parallel to the floor, finger lift groove down. Now slightly lift one side of the sash, slip the metal pivot pin on one side of the sash into the groove of the jam liner, not the shoe, then the other side. Now lower the sash down evenly until the pivot pin slip into the metal portion of the shoe slot. Once engaged, you may tilt the sash up into the frame. You will need to retract the tilt latch at the top of the sash so the sash fully tilts up into the jam liner. Once the sash is tilted up straight, you may release the tilt latches. If done properly, the tilt latch will fully engage into the groove of the jam liner. 
Now you may push the bottom sash all the way down into the frame. At this point you should be able to lock the sash. Visually inspect the sash where it meets the jam liners on each side. There should not be any gaps here. If gaps exist, you will need to shim out the jam liners to eliminate the gaps. It may be necessary to loosen the screws slightly in order to shim between the window frame and the back of the jam liner. Do not take the screw out too far. When you are satisfied with the fit, you may move on to the installation of the stops. Installing the sill stop across the bottom of the window is our next step. But if your existing window frame has stool running across the bottom of it, you can skip this step. Next we will install the two pieces of vertical beveled tilt stop along the edge of the window frame, which will cover the edge of the jam liners. Note the orientation of the stop in the installation drawing. Depending on your window, you may have to trim these to length with a saw. Fit the pieces along each side of the window frame. Caution, do not nail into the jam liner. Nail the stop to the side frame of the window. You will now repeat the process on the other side. Next, nail the parting stop across the top of the window frame. Make sure that the weather strip is facing the exterior of the house. And that's it. A little bit of caulk around the joints and some paint and you're all done.